Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have another movie review. I didn't forget about you. You know how it goes. I was in school, but now I have some more time on my hands. <laughs> I've been wanting to make a, uh, a review about this movie for quite a while. And um, so the story goes is that um, I was writing a f in the progress and the process of writing a first draft of a, of a film and what happened was is it takes place in the year that this movie um, was released, so 1995. So I was like, okay, like, you know, my script has something to do with music and it takes place in a record shop and it, you know, it's been on Netflix for a while streaming. So I was like, okay, let's, you know, watch this, you know, just have a movie on and then I'll just I'll work on this script and I really I'm just gonna apologize you know like I understand that like this movie has garnered a, f a cult following of sorts it was a, a box office flop when it was initially 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 uh, released um, that's what, what I found out I think it made only like a little over two hundred thousand dollars it made like two hundred thirty something thousand dollars I think was like their total box office or something like that um, but it basically, it was a failure, um, initially, and now it's garnered this, like, cult following. Like, people apparently love this movie, they're like, oh my gosh, it, like, you know, there's music, and it, it's, like, record store culture. Um, I really wanted to like this movie. Um, I've watched it twice now, and I think I might have enjoyed it a bit, bit more the second time but I still don't really care for it. I think for, if you're going to really take my critiques to heart or whatever, I would just say that this movie would only be worth it if you really were just like, I wanna see, you know, Renee Zellweger when she was first coming up uh, in Hollywood, cause this is like one of her first roles, like her early roles, or Liv Tyler, um, that's probably, if you're like diehard fans for any of these actors, that's probably the only reason why I could think of, uh, you watching it. Um, now this is just my opinion, but I just want to, most of my problems with this movie were writing based. Um, there are a lot of characters and let me just begin by saying that, um, writing narratives with multiple main characters is hard even for veteran writers even though people who have experience writing um you know they've been doing it for years it's hard because you have so many people and you have to have all of these arcs take place you have to have events unfold you have to have characters and characters relating to each other in different ways showing how they change or not change or et cetera, et cetera. So I have a lot to unpack, so just bear with me. Um, I wrote down notes, so if I'm kind of like disorganized, um, some of it was from the first time I watched it and then I kind of added some more notes uh, the second time I went, my second go around. So my first note that I wrote down was we're supposed to believe the characters are really close, but I don't really understand that or get that. So, for instance, AJ, which is the fellow in the uh, brown and white checkered sweater, uh, you're supposed to believe that AJ likes Corey, which is Liv Tyler's character. Like he likes her, you know. Obviously, he's like you know he has a crush on her and he wants to her to be his girlfriend, whatever. But the thing is, in the film, they barely interact. Um, that's the thing about this movie is it had like a bunch of things happening, but at the same time, it felt like nothing was happening, if that makes any sense. I guess it kind of goes with um, like, it's just not really like, you don't really know what the characters want at first. And what's really weird is that they'll just randomly just go, I want this 
And it's just like a lot of s aspects about this film were very, seemed very forced. Like they were just like, oh, we have to reveal what these people want and what they need. So we'll just like have them go, you know, word vomited out, which it, it's just not, you know, it's like exposition. Like there's moments where you're just like, okay, why would you just yell that out randomly? So that's my first note is like, I don't understand the nature of these characters' relationships with each other. I kind of, you kind of get the, f the feeling that like Renee Zellweger's character, Gina, knows Corey. Um, like they've known each other for a while, but like they're probably best friends um, out of the group. But I don't really get like the nature of like, or how these people, like honestly, they obviously they work together, but like, I don't know, I just didn't really understand like what the, these characters didn't really serve, like secondary characters need to like serve uh, something to you know, other characters. But I guess that's the problem is none of these characters were really supposed to be secondary. And what's great about secondary characters is they can be uh, sounding board characters, they can be, um, you know, allies, you know, enemies, they can really reveal things about a main character. Um, so, <laughs> uh, what's it? so basically, you don't really get to know these characters that well. And I'm basically, at times, I even wrote, I wrote down that like, it felt like bodies were just kind of inhabiting a screen. Um, what's very strange is there's a there's a part where there's a funeral like they kind of because this one girl's depressed and she kind of basically had like a suicide attempt um and they're trying to teach show her her name's deborah what it would be like for a funeral and they just randomly start spewing what their like weaknesses and problems are and it's like it comes out of nowhere and I wrote down this thing too, where I said, um, characters often do not know what they need. Um, and that's true. Characters don't know what they need. They just know what they want. And we don't really understand at first what they want. Um, they just kind of go, I want to be, I want to go to art school, but I'm scared. And what's really strange is you know, like you have a moment where Gina goes, if I don't do something, I'm going to end up like my mother. It's like characters, it's just no character's gonna like spew what they need in life. It's just, it's so unnatural. And I just was not buying it. Um, so yeah, I don't, it was weird that they would just randomly go to like, go like, this is my problem. And it just, nothing was organic about it. Like, it seemed very not natural. And it was rather forced just for the sake of creating random conflict. Like we have to create conflict. So we're just gonna have Corey just go, I'm not like you. Uh, I don't just like sleep with every guy or whatever she says. And Gina's like, oh, you mean I'm a freaking slut or whatever? <sighs> ah, it's just all of it is crammed in. All of it is crammed in, resulting in these people word vomiting what their weaknesses, their fears, what their problems are. And I feel like at times uh, the runtime, it's even, even though it's an average runtime of one hour and 30 minutes, it feels longer. And Lucas, I think it, it's like, he had a potential to be a very interesting character. And you, you're introduced to him first, and you're like, okay, he's the main character. But then he's not the main character. There's multiple main characters. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, and what's really strange is like, Joe, who owns the, the the record store it's almost like he forgets that he's mad at him 
he doesn't beat him up until later, even after this kid like lost like $9,000. <sighs> like what? I also feel like the character, like I feel like their setting was a bit underutilized. Like you take, it takes place in a record store and I feel like, you know, <laughs> it's interesting we got like we had there's a lot of great 1990s music and all we get is like you know some like alternative rock and then there's like some more poppy music and I felt like the teens could have bonded more with music other than just like a guy a washed up like pop singer coming and then like you know the girls like him or whatever I just felt like I would it just seems like no one's that passionate about music and I don't care if Gina you know Renee Zellweger's character said I want to audition for a band but I don't have the guts I don't care if she says that you know randomly it was so weird it was like out of nowhere you know she's like I want to be a singer and I just ugh, once again with the whole like just them randomly declaring what their fears are. And I'm not, I, I, it should have been, it should have been revealed organically that she wants to be a singer in a band. <laughs> and it wasn't. Um, I just, and then all of a sudden, you know, and then Mark, you know, is interested in like this, which is, which is Ethan Embry's character, is interested in like this band called, I think it's, what was it, was it Grar? I can't remember. And then he's like, I'm going to start my own band. Um, I just didn't really feel like the characters were all that passionate about music. And I feel like if you have all these characters in a music store, you should probably make them more passionate about music. <laughs> um, because what's the whole point of working in a music store? Um, I mean, if I, if I hated fish, I wouldn't be a fisher, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't fish. Um, I don't know. I just felt like, I, you know, maybe someone could, it will prove me wrong, but like they actually were very passionate about music. Okay. What else do I have to talk about? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so they made Liv Tyler's character a speed addict. Like she uses speed basically. I think it's just to, you know, study a whole lot, like to stay awake and for energy or whatever. So they randomly, like, why did this character need to take speed? That's my question. Why? And then, like, the situation after Gina, like, you know, she, like, knew and she reveals to everybody, oh, you take speed or whatever, and then she, like, throws it about the room. It's like, then later it's forgotten. Like, doesn't Corey need to stop taking speed? like get help go to rehab it's it's speed that shit you know it your problems aren't all solved just because you say to aj that you like him as well <laughs> oh my gosh it's just like why why did this why did that why did that need to happen my favorite scene in this entire movie was probably when Joe, you know, he's all stressed, he's angry. He goes to his drum kit and he plays the drums along with, you know, a, a track. And then they, um, they use the speaker for the store and they, so everyone can hear it. I thought that was the best freaking, <laughs> I thought that was the greatest, the best scene out of the entire movie. Um, you know, I, I kind of understand it's like they have these sayings where it's like, damn the man or whatever. And they're like, they're supposed to be like these misfit teenagers of the 1990s. Um, but, and it was also, I have to talk about, um, sorry if I'm a bit scattered. Lucas, the main, I, was he, I guess, supposed to be like the main character? I don't know. They're basically treating Lucas like he's this Yoda or Obi-Wan like where he just like he he's such like a he's like a philosophical dude <laughs> or whatever and 
Joe is like not mad at him in the end. He's like, oh, you knew what I wanted somehow. That I just wanted my own like fucking, I don't know, space. It was just like the strangest thing. I think Lucas had potential to be a good character, you know, but everybody's arcs were just crammed in and it didn't work. That's my opinion. Anyways, um, tell me what you think about this movie. I think it could have been, it could have been so much better. And how you start with this movie being so much better is you have, you focus on one character. And then you have secondary characters that reveal things about the main character. That would have worked. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.